The disciples likewise hesitated to do as Christ commanded. And had their hesitation persisted into refusal, <laughs> their nets would have remained empty. But Peter said, I don't understand this command. Nevertheless, I will let down the net. I'm sure he was talking to himself and saying, this doesn't make any sense to me. This goes contrary to all that I know about fishing, all my human wisdom. This doesn't make any sense according to the experience I've had as a fisherman. Nevertheless, because it is your word, O Christ, I will let down the net. Let my neighbors scoff if they like. Let them laugh at me. Let me appear to be foolish in their eyes. Nevertheless, on your account, Lord, because I trust your wisdom rather than my own, I will let down No, Mark, you, he did not lower that net in vain. The catch of fish was so enormous that the nets were strained to the breaking point. It took the combined efforts of all of the disciples to get the catch to shore. Indeed, there was enough fish to tax the capacity of two boats. And the loads were so heavy that both vessels were in danger of sinking. Oh, men and women, don't you see that God is just waiting to overload you with blessings. He's the giver par excellence. Put me to the test, he said in the Bible. Put me to the test and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. I want you to go home today with at least this little nugget. The boatloads of fish in our story are the sign of God's amazing generosity. They represent the superabundant blessings which God wishes to bestow on those who hear His word and do it. The word of God must be heard. Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. The deaf are lost. If you can or won't hear the word of God, then you'll be without God and without hope in the world. He simply cannot give you his blessings because you are in no position to receive that. But more than hearing is needed, there must also be a doing of the word. On one occasion, you will remember, Jesus and his disciples went to a wedding. And at the wedding feast, the wine ran dry. Can you think of anything more horrible to happen at a wedding than the wine to run out? And Mary, the mother of Jesus, takes action. She goes to the servants and she says to them, I have one piece of advice for you. Do whatever he commands you. Well, what did Jesus command them to do? <laughs> he told them to draw water from the water jars and they were half a dozen of them and they were huge jars containing many gallons of water. He tells them to draw from those water jars and take it up to the master of the feast. Now, just put yourself in the place of one of those servants. Wouldn't you think that maybe Jesus had taken leave of his senses? Take up water when it was wine that was needed? I imagine those servants grumbling to each other. Why would a silly 
anything for him to tell us to do. Maybe we'll be blamed if we take water instead of wine. Jesus must have taken leave of his senses. So they thought. They thought he was unreasonable. But the servants nevertheless obeyed. And when the master of the feast took a drink, why it was wine! Not only was it wine, but it was the finest wine that could be found anywhere in Palestine. The fact is that the Lord often commands us to do something strange and contrary to human common sense. Ah, but when we hear and when we do what he commands, miracles occur. I have a story that I think makes that plain. Modern story. I have it on good authority that it actually happened. No. Hear this story. Brenda was almost halfway to the top of the tremendous granite cliff. She was standing on the ledge where she was taking a breather during this, her first rock climb. And as she rested there, the safety rope snapped against her eye and knocked out her contact lens. Great, she thought. Here I am on a rock ledge hundreds of feet from the bottom and hundreds of feet from the top. Now I can't see my sight is blurred. She looked and looked, hoping somehow to find the, the lens on the ledge somewhere, but it just wasn't there. She felt panic rising in her, so she began to pray. She prayed for calm. And she prayed that she might find her contact lens. When she got to the top of the cliff, a friend examined her eye and her clothing for the lens, but it was not to be found. Although she was calm now that she was at the top, she was sad because she could not see clearly across the mountains. But then she thought of the Bible verse, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole then she prayed, Lord, you can see all these mountains. You know every stone and every leaf. And you know exactly where my contact lens is. Please, Lord, help me. Later, when they wiped, or when they hiked down the trail to the bottom of the cliff, they met another party of climbers who were just starting up, up the face of the cliff. And one of them shouted out, Hey, you guys! Anybody lose a contact lens? Well, that would be startling enough. But you know why the climber saw it? An ant was moving. 